Private equity managed to post its second best year ever in 2022 with a 650 billion US dollars by our deal value. For the first half of the year, the industry continued the momentum from 2021, which was the best year ever. Then in June 2022, the Federal Reserve and then the rest of the world increased interest rates. This was combined with the broader uncertainty caused by the war in Europe, commodity prices, disruption in the supply chains, leading to banks pulling back from funding leveraged transactions. As a result, we saw sharp declines. Buyout deal value fell by 35%. Average deal size fell by 23%. Buyout backed exits fell across channels and regions by about 40% while global fundraising fell by 10%. Now, given the heights from which the private equity industry fell, we still finished 2022 with a respectable totals in a historical context. But this sudden reversal marked the end of an up cycle that has endured since 2010 and produced a 12-year run of fantastic performance. We do have a number of challenges ahead and an unprecedented mix of macro forces. The war in Ukraine, natural resources shortages, global food prices, supply disruption, inflation, geopolitics, just to name a few. Importantly also, the rise in rates have, has made cheap, accessible financing very difficult to get. When we talk with clients, we feel that the real problem is the lack of clarity about what is really happening and when is it going to end. This uncertainty will continue to act as a cap on deal activity especially for the largest transactions that require the most leverage. So what does this mean for the industry? In the short term, LPs will need time to work through their portfolios and definitely raising new capital will be a challenge. Despite the short term issues though, we remain positive on the industry's outlook. First and probably most importantly, we should keep in mind that the accumulation of funds from prior years combined with the slowdown in deal markets means we have now a record amount of dry powder sitting at about $3.7 trillion. So the reality is that the industry has a lot of firepower to invest against good opportunities. Secondly, the industry is still attractive to investors, both given the returns it has provided over the last decade, as well as the current limitations of the public markets. Finally, GPs are focusing on product innovation, such as new types of fund structures. They will also be tapping onto very significant but less penetrated pools of capital, such as sovereign wealth funds and wealthy individual investors. And there are also global trends that will require investment, such as the energy transition and Web3. So in our view, the long-term outlook is positive, and history suggests that some clarity on the macro context, not necessarily ideal economic conditions, is what will bring back positive momentum in the industry. Past downturns have shown us that the winning players are those who correctly assess all risk scenarios, created mitigation plans and continue to invest during the crisis. Regardless of which macro scenario plays out, there are a few factors that appear certain. For instance, the aging population that will make labor markets tighter over the next decade, government budget pressures, cost of materials, energy transition investment requirements, and finally, of course, interest costs, given the high interest rate environment. As the data shows, Returns in the recent years have come largely from multiple expansion rather than from revenue and margin growth. Now, this will now change because companies will not have that luxury moving forward as higher rates continue to put downward pressure on asset prices. That means returns will increasingly have to come from growth in earnings. But given the context I just described, those gains will be much harder to come by. Companies will need to focus on finding ways to improve bottom line. For instance, Invest in automation to address demographics and rising cost of labor. Invest in supply chain security to prevent supply shocks to the business. Manage their balance sheet, trying to lock in favorable rates whenever possible, but also being cautious on overall leverage levels. Focus on the customer, both on the overall value proposition, but also importantly by targeting customer groups and industries with lower price sensitivity. And last but not least, businesses need to build their organic growth story. Given the circumstances, growth will have to come at the expense of competition. Strategies to gain share in other addressable markets will become the core tool for successful companies. We believe that accelerating out of recession starts with taking a fresh look at a company's competitive position and plotting how to use the downturn to gain market share. Now, identifying those opportunities now and having the courage to go after them is what we believe will end up generating superior performance over time. Thank you.